In a previous video, I've shown how you can reclaim fully rechargeable lithium cells from disposable devices that are discarded in the street. Devices that look like a little colourful tube in a wide selection of colours with a mouthpiece on one end. I'd like to tell you what it is, but YouTube just doesn't seem to like stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, it produces a cloud of fog when you inhale on it. And... Uh, it's got fruity flavours and when you're finished with it, a lot of people just throw it in the ground because that's the sort of thing that they used to do with their previous version of this. And this means that when you see these lying on the ground, preferably not run over by cars and oval, don't, don't pick them up if they've been crushed or if they've been wet, you may see the end glowing blue if moisture is getting in because the little sensor in the end that detects airflow is very prone to picking that up, uh, to getting uh, water in it and then just triggering all the time but it has protection against that, but you'll often see it glowing blue. That's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, if it's been wet too long, the battery can be drained too low just by water ingress. But if it's glowing blue, it's probably fine because there's enough voltage to make the blue LED glow. Anyway, you want to remove the battery from these devices by opening them up. Keep in mind that uh, they are kind of like, they've been in people's mouths, just so you know. But then again, so have cups and glasses and pubs and bars and cafes and you want to take a solder iron and you'll find that there's little tabs in the end that you can desolder the wires from and you can take the cell out now there's a variety of different cells some are just plain like this and they do have polarity markings on them but it's always worth checking with the meter just to play in the safe side but many of them do fortunately have red tape in the positive end and black tape in the negative end and in this video i'm going to show you how to use these to power a string of decorative LED lights for quite a long period of time. The amount of time it will run them depends on the size of batteries you use, or lithium cells. Well, this is a battery of cells. It's two cells in parallel. And the choice of resistor, because this actually has a resistor that I've added in in series. It's 33 ohms. And by choosing the value of that resistor between 10 ohms to 100 ohms, you can determine the brightness uh, and the runtime. It's quite a versatile system. These lights, incidentally, came from uh, Asda, which used to be owned by Walmart. Not, so I'm not sure if these will be common in America as well. It's their multicolour lights, which happen to be blue, purple and pink, which are very attractive. Now, for this project, it does involve working with lithium cells. So I do have my explosion containment pie dish on hand. This is just a metal dish that if things go horribly wrong, you can throw... Uh, flaming batteries in it, just because, you know, lithium cells are an energy storage device. So when you join these cells in parallel, and you could just use a single cell if you wish, or you could make a stack of them in parallel like this. When you connect them in parallel, you have to make sure the voltages are matched, because once you connect them together, uh, if one's got a higher voltage than the other, the current will flow from the high voltage one to the lower voltage one, and if one's fully charged and one is fully discharged, that current can be quite high. So you're aiming for at most a 0.1 volt difference between the cells before you join them together. There was a 0.1 volt difference. I put a clamp meter over and then dabbed the wire on and there's 500 milliamps flowing between them. And once uh, the current is flown from the higher voltage one to the lower voltage one, the higher voltage one's uh, voltage will gradually lower down, the lower voltage one will gradually come up and they'll balance. Because when you put cells in parallel, lithium cells in parallel like this, they just act like one big lithium cell. So I have linked them across and I've brought the wires out. Be very careful to make sure if you have bared wires that you uh, put a bit of tape over the end of one of them just so they don't short together and uh, do terrible things because these things can put out a lot of current. They are little energy cells. Um, but so make sure that you tape over that and also support them together. Make sure that you don't put too much press on the little tabs in because these are little pouch cells and uh, they've got foil tabs brought out the end, which have been folded over with a bit of captain tape. That's the yellow tape. Um, and uh, if you put too much pressure, it can actually rip them or pull them out the cell or damage the cell. Um, right. So that is our cell made anyway. Uh, if you want to play safe, you can discharge each individual cell down to about, say, three volts, because at that point, there's very little energy left in it. And if you do have a little short circuit while you're working on it, it's probably not going to do much because there is so little energy left 
If they're fully charged to 4.2 volts, there's lots of energy and they can do terrible things. One of them did a terrible thing this morning. Uh, melted wires and smoke and everything. It was really exciting. Uh, sudden appearance of snips chopping wires to disconnect the circuit. That's what you do. So for controlling the charge of this, I'm going to use a very standard module from eBay called a TP4056 module, allowing me to show you a much larger image of this. I shall focus down that. I shall zoom in it. And here's what we have. We have a USB charging port, but we also have two connections for an input. And it's useful to note that you can connect a 5 volt solar panel directly to this. And effectively, if these LEDs were running at very low current, they wouldn't cut off during the day, but they wouldn't be visible during the day. But it could be charging the lithium cells at a higher current than these actually consumed. And it means that you could make a very, very simple nightlight, you know, such that it just topped it up during the day and the LEDs were visible at night. But you can connect a 5 volt cell to these connections or a USB port. You get two versions of this. You get the, well, I think you get three versions. You get mini, uh, micro and the USB-C versions of this. But this is a, um, this one is a micro USB because that's what most of my leads are here. It's using the TP, TP4056 chip. This, you can program this chip with a resistor to limit the current. I'm not changing the resistor this time because it's preset in these modules for one amp. I've got two of these 550 milliamp hour cells together. So one amp is absolutely fine for charging these. If you wanted to change it, you can change the value of this resistor, which is uh, 1.2K at the moment, one, two, and two zeros. That's kind of, it's mounted upside down. Uh, but you can change the value. There's a data sheet for the TP4056 that shows the resistor values and the currents. There are two LEDs, red and green, with a 1K resistor each. There is a couple of decoupling capacitors just for stability of operation. And then this module has the extra protection. I do recommend this extra protection. It protects against over voltage. I mean, this should cut off at 4.2 volts, but this provides an extra layer of protection if it goes above that. But more importantly, when you leave the LEDs running all the time, when it reaches about below 3 volts, about say about 2.5 is the cutoff point for the DW1, it uses this MOSFET package to switch the output off. It's optional. It's up to you. But um, I just, these modules are very, very cheap. Uh, it's more expensive buying one than it is buying 10, ultimately. There, there's very little price difference. So... The circuitry in this one uh, for the DW1, it's very simple. It's got a 100 ohm resistor and capacitor just for monitoring the voltage. That provides a simple filter uh, to provide stable signal. And it's also got a 1K resistor that is used to measure the voltage across the MOSFETs. In case you short circuit this thing, uh, if you do the MOSFET, the voltage across the MOSFETs will potentially go quite high and then the DW01 will cut off. It protects against overcurrent as well. It's a very versatile arrangement. This module is perfect for this. So there are four connections in the output. The two battery connections in the inner battery plus, battery minus, and you've also got output plus, which is actually com to battery plus, and you've got the output minus via the MOSFET package. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solder the battery across these two terminals. I'm going to solder the output to the LEDs across the two outer terminals, sleeve the whole lot up, and that is theoretically going to be it. So let me uh, let me focus in a more sensible height. I shall bring that looks like a more sensible height. And I'm going to bring in the helping hands this time because they will be quite useful. I have a bit of silicon sleeve. Someone suggested this. It's a great idea. It provides better grip and it provides insulation. So now I'm going to start off by soldering on the output connector. The output connector is, well, entirely your choice. You can get sets of connectors on eBay with pre-crimped pre with tails ready for use. I tend to use this connector. I've just used them for a very long time, so I've stuck with them. So what I'm going to start by doing is flowing some solder onto all four of these terminals on this circuit board. So I've got lead-based solder, and I'm not going to be putting the wires through the circuit board. I'm going to be just soldering them onto these pads, almost like surface mount. The reason for that is I don't want spiky solder connections sticking out underneath. So I have now flowed solders onto those connections. And 
because I, it, it's the other way around from the picture I showed you, the positive is here, the output positive. So I'm going to just flow this connector on here. And the negative is at the other side. The one you don't want to short out when you're putting the battery on is the negative to negative because that does defeat the protection. Here is my little battery pack. And now I'm going to, I'm going to fold these back the way I think. What's the best way to do this? Yeah, that's, I'm going to fold those back out the way like that. And I'm going to solder the negative connection of the battery pack on first curvily here. Keep in mind that as soon as you've connected the other connection, that is very hot. That is a plated through hole. That was Bernie Bernie. As soon as you've uh, pulled this cover off here, we now have an active exposed electrical connections and the circuitry is active as well. So make sure you do have insulation in the, uh, the grips there so you don't uh, short anything out. But this is now going on here. And that is more or less it. So I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink over this now so that these terminals can get shorted out. I could test this right now, couldn't I? I could, I could plug my little string of lights in. As I said before, there is a resistor in line. You have to have a resistor in line. If you connected the LEDs in directly, they'd be very bright, but they wouldn't last too long. They might even trip the protection. As it is, the LEDs are lighting nicely. Thank you very much. So I'm going to put this bit of heat shrink across now which I've just chosen a suitable size, and it's actually going to be a bit too long deliberately. So it provides a bit of strain relief for those wires as well. If you wish, you can also put a bit of hot melt glue in there. So I've got this just flush with the end so that I can still plug the USB lead in. And I'm going to use a hot air gun to heat this and melt it on. Well, I say melt it on. Shrink it down might a better, be a better description. The hot air gun is part of a Yahoo 8786D. It's quite old now. It's just part of a soldering station that I just uh, ended up buying. No particular reason for buying this one. You'll find with the heat shrink, if you heat it up and then pinch it while it's still hot, it will kind of fuse together, and that can actually provide a bit of uh, extra strain relief. Sometimes it'll just pop apart, but most of the time it does kind of stay stuck together because it kind of it was soft and sticky at that point. Right, now I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to stick it on to this pack. Keep in mind that I'm going to be able to need to plug the uh, charge port in and I'm going to use double-sided tape. The double-sided tape is partly to protect the cells underneath. In fact, I'll just stick that on the cells right like that. Uh, and it provides a thermal barrier because this little chip here does give off a bit of heat while it's charging. It acts as a variable resistor. And that can be quite a lot of heat if the uh, charge voltage is high and the uh, batteries are low. So I'm going to put the other bit down here and I'm going to leave a little gap underneath it and try and roughly align that chip above that gap so that there's a bit of uh, heat flow. Although the heat shrink doesn't really help that much around that, it's going to restrict that a bit. But if the chip gets too hot, it will self-regulate. And now I'm going to stick this Roughly there. Oh, look, I've stuck the chip right over the thermal tape, the uh, foam tape. That's an excellent move. And the, the reason I didn't put the wires through and of the solder joints at the bottom is because pressing it down, you could actually puncture the solder, the sharp solder points through the cells. It'd be ideal putting this whole lot in a little bit of heat shrink now, um, or alternatively, uh, make a little box for it. But this is it. So theoretically now, when I plug in my USB charge lead, this one's going to reach, it should show it's charging with a red LED. It is showing it's charging with a red LED. And when it's charged, that should go blue. Uh, but at any time, you can plug in your LEDs with that suitable resistor in line. I'm, I'm repeating saying that because uh, if you don't have it in line, it would nook your LEDs. But this is it. Uh, the job is done. We have our LEDs. I'll take the exposure off and there you have your sprinkling of LEDs now powered by what was basically rubbish thrown at the side of the street and a, a very cheap module and, and your cheap LEDs, of course.
Uh, so that's a good result. I would say that is quite nice. Uh, quite attractive colour of lights and uh, they will run for a very long time. The current is relatively low. I can just give you a rough idea of how much current there is. The current is going to be roughly 1.5 volts being dropped on a freshly charged battery uh, divided by, I've used a 33 ohm resistor, it's only about 50 milliamps. So that should run for about, oh, a day. Like full 24 hour day on a full charge of this, which means that if you charged it, uh, in the beginning of the evening, it's going to keep you, well, it's going to run into the next day. Um, easily, you're not going to, you know, this is, these batteries are going to last you for a year of illumination, just charging and uh, discharging, because you're going to get typically about 500 to 1,000 charge cycles out of these discarded lithium cells. And that is it. It's quite a good result, I'd say. And that is basically how to turn garbage uh, disposed disposable devices into um, Fairlight power sources.